every single generation is given a new CIA agent to basically glamorize the agency. And now it's not only Hollywood that does it. On social media, the CIA themselves have an extraordinarily proficient social media campaign. I'm gay and I'm in the CIA and isn't that great? Growing up gay in a small southern town, Imagine my surprise when I was taking my oath at CIA and I noticed a rainbow on then-director Brennan's lanyard. I remember being stunned. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I am intersectional. I stand here today a proud first-generation Latina and officer at CIA. Oh my God, for God's sake, your ancestors were killed off by the CIA coup which put in place people like Rios Mott and so on, real gangsters in charge of Guatemala and now you're doing a TikTok video saying, you know, I'm from Guatemala and I'm in the CIA, isn't it so liberal and great? By the way, this is identical to the cultural work done by Mossad, Israeli intelligence, to suggest that it's been very successful. The CIA is not very successful in a lot of the things it does. Yes, there are lots of coups it succeeds in conducting, but there's a lot of stuff it doesn't succeed in doing. Till today, the government in Cuba looks in the eye of the CIA and says, well, good try, fellas, but you didn't get us. So we should also have that understanding that they are fallible, they have weaknesses, they are not titans walking astride the earth. The Central Intelligence Agency is the official name of the CIA. Intelligence isn't the marker of your brain power and so on. This is not an education agency. Mandate number one was espionage and analysis. But the second was that they would infiltrate, do sabotage and assassinations. That was there from the beginning. How do we know that? Because the CIA made manuals of assassination, which you can download their public archive. In 2019, October, I got a message saying that there's going to be a coup d'etat against the government of Evo Morales, a leading indigenous president who democratized a country that was wretchedly unequal over a 14-year period. And a lot of people were saying, no, there's no coup. It's that Morales has been there too long in office. Just for the record, Evo Morales was the president of Bolivia for less time than Angela Merkel was the chancellor of Germany. Even people, it seemed to me, of the kind of left or liberals said, well, it's not a coup. He did fraud in the election, all kinds of things. And if you look at the nine-part story of how a coup takes place, from getting the right people on the ground, beginning to delegitimize the person, making the economy scream. You'll see that Bolivia in 2019 was a textbook coup d'etat managed by the Central Intelligence Agency in the United States. What was the need of overthrowing the government of Evo Morales? After all, Evo Morales was not marshalling a military force to threaten the United States or anything. Well, here's what he was doing that was threatening. He was developing a very close relationship with the Chinese government in particular. He was taking lithium, Bolivia being one of the countries with a large holding of lithium, and he had begun, instead of just exporting raw materials, to process lithium inside Bolivia. And in fact, Bolivia, just a few weeks before the coup, rolled out the first electric car that they made, a small little car, like a buggy almost. Morales himself drove the first car off the factory lot. You challenge international capitalism, you challenge the system of how profit should be made and you become a criminal in the world today. If you say that I prefer to take care of the poor in my country than taking care of the rich in your country, that itself is sufficient to have your government overthrown. And that's exactly what the United States government did, utilizing different agencies, including the CIA. I've interviewed hundreds of CIA agents in my time spent a lot of time with them talking about different parts of the world and so on. I find their thinking to be fascinating because they'll tell you directly, this is why they do it. They do it because the people in charge there are not sufficiently listening to the orders that come to them from Washington, D.C. Between 1961 and 1965, in three major countries, Three acts of immense violence took place. In 1961, Patrice Lumumba, the leader in the most important country in Africa at the time, in the Congo, was overthrown from office and was killed. The CIA played a direct role with Belgian intelligence. The evidence is sitting there in the CIA archive, which is public. 
In 1964, a liberal left government in Brazil was overthrown in a coup, bringing in a dictatorship 21 years that suffocated the left in South America's largest country. Not only did the CIA play a role inside Brazil, but the United States government sent a fleet of warships to sit off the coast to threaten the government of Gulat. And in 1965, in Indonesia, tanks left the barracks in the morning and murdered a million communists, including communists killed on the beaches of Bali. The CIA, Australian intelligence, British intelligence played a direct role. In fact, Australian intelligence with the CIA help telex lists of people to the Indonesian military. That's sitting in the archives in Australia. Now tell me that violence doesn't work. What these three acts of violence did is in the three continents of Asia, Africa and Latin America, in the most important countries in these continents, the left was destroyed by immense violence. When are we going to talk about the crimes of imperialism? Violence doesn't work, seem to work very well in these countries. Seem to work very, very well. Amnesia is the greatest enemy of human progress. We can't forget the past. I look back at something like the history of the CIA in order to understand how to be hopeful in the present, not to marinate in resentment or in hatred and so on. When I wrote Washington Bullets, the book is filled with poetry. Much of that poetry written by the kinds of people that were killed by the CIA. Why? Because the people killed by the CIA are idealistic people, utopians who want to make the world a better place. We have to remember that. Those who think that capitalism will solve our problems, I believe that they are actually the unrealistic people. They persist in an idealism that continues to ruin the world. We have a planet of 8 billion people. We produce enough food for 14 billion people. The 2.7 billion people who are hungry, what they don't have is money. And that's immoral that money is the barrier between food and hunger. It's idealistic to believe the market can solve that problem. I'm realistic. I have a solution to that problem. Let's use our social wealth, our considerable social wealth to feed people. Yes, we are utopians, so are the poets. But our utopianism is realistic, it's not idealistic. There's no such thing called independent media. There's just media and then there's propaganda. Double Down News, for instance, doubles down on the bet to make humanity a better place. It's the media, you have to support it. You want to learn about how the world is working? and what you can do to make things better, join Double Down News on Patreon.